hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? I hope you are doing great. Oh, I had an awesome day today. Got a lot accomplished, a whole lot accomplished for a Monday. I hope you did too. Um, what I want to talk about tonight is who's our enemy? Who is our enemy? So we're going to delve into that. We're going to delve into some scriptures, but we're going to start with the Good Shepherd. We're going to talk about the Good Shepherd first. And we're going to make our way to the enemies. The enemy or the enemies. We have one really huge one. Hey, Ashton, how are you doing tonight? My friend Ashton joined me. He just got back from youth camp. That's awesome. I hear that y'all had an awesome time. So last night, <clears throat> I was supposed to be at youth, but my plans got changed. So, I ended up at home. And so, I watched K-Love award shows, which was very good. Very good. But then, Louis Giglio popped up on my YouTube feed and I really like him. I really like all the work that he's done with the passion conferences over the years and the passion camps and he's an awesome awesome pastor and so I listened to his sermon on don't give the enemy a place at your table and I thought that was so good. I thought it was so good the way that he did it. And so I shared it for y'all on my site because I want you to go and watch that. And then as I'm getting ready to come on on YouTube, he's doing a Bible study on this and I'm very excited. He's got session one up and I want to go and watch session one later. And uh, it might be something that I can share with y'all too. Louis Giglio is an awesome awesome pastor and evangelist and minister he is he um, he does a lot of things geared towards the youth anyway he is uh, that was an awesome message that I watched last night I really enjoyed that and uh, I'm a friend Ashton left he probably had to go answer a call or something anyway it's okay he can watch this later sometimes he watches me sometimes he doesn't it's okay I do this for an audience of one and that's God because he asked me to so I am going to jump into some prayer and then uh, we will get into this lesson and so good such a good message last night so good and I think that God wanted me I mean I was supposed to be in here delivering a message but I think the message was for me last night because I caught myself today as I was driving thinking negative things and then I would stop and I'd go no I'm not gonna give the enemy a place at my table I'm not gonna do that so it's this is a good tool this is a good tool against the enemy so maybe y'all can use it god we just come to you and we just thank you god we thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us god we thank you that you created us that you are our protector our provider our uh, sustainer our shelter in the storm god you are our refuge and our strength but God, you are great Jehovah, and you are the great I Am, God. You have always been, and you will always be. You are on your throne, and you are in control, and nothing is hidden from you, God. No sin is hidden from you. You are um, magnificent and powerful and mighty, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all in righteousness. But God, you are also loving and kind and compassionate and faithful, forgiving patient God because you want none to perish God thank you for loving us thank you for calling us as your children we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength and God we just pray that you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost that you would allow the Holy Spirit 
to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. And we pray for the prodigals, God. We pray for them to come home. God, I just pray for all the many decisions that were made at youth camp, God. The way that the Holy Spirit moved through that camp, God. I just praise you for that because that was my prayer, is that the Holy Spirit would move all through that camp, touching the people, drawing people to Jesus, drawing people back to Jesus. God, thank you so much. Thank you for the safety. Thank you that all the kids got delivered home safe this afternoon. God, we just praise you and thank you. We give you all the glory and honor for their experience at camp, God. God, we just pray for all the disasters that are happening, God. I was listening to someone while ago about this huge drought that's just going across the United States, but it hasn't gotten to our state yet because we keep getting rain. We keep getting the blessings of rain, and we thank you for that, God. But many places where we buy uh, meat and many places where we buy crops, God, they are in a huge drought. God, please send them some rain. God, show show the people that want to be in control of this universe that you are still in control of this universe. God, send them some rain. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. Ricky went to a, a, a visitation tonight, God. For a man in Walnut Springs, God, we just pray that you would be with his family, that they would just feel your presence tonight, that they would feel the love of Jesus through others, God. God, we have so much to be thankful for. Just help us to be thankful and grateful all the time, God. Help us not, not to let the enemy come to our table, that Jesus has prepared especially for us, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, pray and share, warriors. I'm just really pumped about this message. And it's not even my message. But I am pumped to share what I experienced last night. And I really hope you will take an hour out of your time and go and listen to what Louis Giglio had to say last night. But we're going to look up some scriptures, and I'm going to kind of give you like an overview of what I got out of this message. Because I did get a lot, and there were times that I was just going, wow, I never, I never understood what that said. That was the part of Psalm 23 that I did not understand. But now I do. Now I understand it. So we're going to go to Psalms 23, which is one of my favorite. If I'm having a bad day, I usually end up here because it reminds me of who Jesus is and who Jesus is to me and what he does in my life. So it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, shepherds take care of their sheep. They don't want for anything. They have water. They have food. They have shelter. They have protection. That's who Jesus is. He is our shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And we don't want. We don't want. When we are walking with Jesus, we don't want for anything. I don't want for anything. I did make me some coffee, though. Because it's a rainy afternoon, and no, it's not cold outside, but it's kind of cold in here because my air conditioner's been running. So I just thought it was a nice little afternoon that I could uh, have some coffee, and it's decaf, so hopefully I can sleep tonight. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. So I guess sometimes since he makes us, sometimes we don't want to. We don't want to lay down in green pastures. Because we're looking at this pasture over here, and we're like, that looks so much better. Why can't we just go over there and hang out a little bit? 
Why do you want me to lay down in this green pasture here when that's a green pasture over there? But the thing is, we don't know a lot of times what is over in that other pasture. But Jesus does. There may be grass burrs over there. There may be snakes over there. There may be all kinds of things over there. There might be a wolf that lives over there in that green pasture. So we need to do what Jesus wants us to do. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still water. And it's something that Louis Giglio pointed out just last night when I watched that message. Actually, that message is four weeks old. So it's no coincidence that God led me there. He wanted me to see that. <laughs> so he talked about he talked about how sheep sheep are not smart. They need a shepherd. But sheep would go up to the water and rushing water and they would stick their heads down in it. Well they're like full of fleece. <laughs> Start to say fur, but they're full of fleece. I mean they're like heavy with fleece on their face so their face would get wet and it would pull them into that water and then the shepherd would have to rescue them before they drown. So he leads us beside the still water. He knows where the still water is and he knows where the fast running water is. So he leads us. He leads us. We need to follow. When you have a leader you need to follow. So we need to follow him. He restoreth my soul. He restores our soul. So that means that when we are in sin and we are not doing what's right, all we have to do is ask for forgiveness and He will restore our soul. He restores it back to new every time. We start over new every time. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Okay, so he will lead us in righteousness. We have to follow. Lead and follow. You got a leader, you got followers. You got usually one leader. Well, you got a bunch of followers. We need to follow. We need to follow in his footsteps. The closer we can stay to his footsteps, the more we're going to know what is on the path with us. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Okay, we're going to walk through some really hard times in our lives. This doesn't say, The Lord is my shepherd and my life is perfect. Because it's not. Life, even when you have a Savior, is not going to be perfect. You're going to go through some things some really hard things, some things that take a long time to get through, some things that don't. But we are going to be in the valley of the shadow of death. We are going to be there. I will fear, fear. <laughs> I will fear no evil. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid in the valley of the shadow of death we do not have to be afraid at all we don't have to be afraid because we're with Jesus for thou art with me because he's always with us he's always with us he never leaves us we stray away sometimes like sheep we go oh hey I'm going to that pasture over there Come get me when I get in a mess. You know, we're the ones that stray. He is always right where we left him. Thy rod and thy staff. Okay, the staff is the hook thing where he can rescue us out of the deep, fast water or where, where he can rescue us away from the wolf. The rod is for the enemy. The rod is to combat the enemy. That's for protection. So because we have that staff that will rescue us and then we have the rod that will protect us. 
So this is the part that most of this message was about. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Okay, I never really understood that. Why does Jesus do that? Why does he prepare us a table in the presence of our enemies? I thought, well, why? Let's just, you know, let's just have a table and no enemies there. But the thing is, is that Jesus has all the good things to offer us. All the things that we need, all the supply, all the protection, all everything. So he lays everything out for us on the table, everything. Louis Giglio, like, he had food on his table, which was pretty cool. He even sat down and started eating it at one point. Um, I didn't prepare a table, I'm sorry. You're going to have to imagine a table, and then you're going to have to go watch Louis Giglio. So... He prepares us a table in front of our enemies. He wants our enemies to see the relationship that he has with us. The sit-down relationship that he has with us. The one-on-one -on -one relationship. He wants our enemies to see that. Um, he does not want our enemy, our enemy, which is Satan, he does not want our enemy sitting down at that table and so that's that's the whole message don't give your enemy a place at your table okay well satan is our enemy and we're going to look up some scriptures about him in a minute but that's why he prepares a table in front of our enemies like our not the enemy but our enemies because he wants them to see that one-on-one -on -one relationship that we have with him. Now sometimes we are too busy for this one-on-one -on -one relationship that we need to have with Jesus. Like the sheep and the shepherd, this one-on-one -on -one relationship. Oh no! Hang on. I unplugged my computer a while ago. Okay, I caught it in time. I forgot. We were having a storm a while ago, and I unplugged my computer. My phone's plugged into my computer. Okay. So, this one-on-one -on -one relationship that we need to take time to have with Jesus is very important. And so, he wants to show our enemies the good things that he has for us. And the good things that he could have for them, too, if they want to accept him as their savior. But a lot of times what we do is at that very table that Jesus has set for us, we invite the enemy to come and tell us a bunch of lies that Jesus doesn't tell us. Like, you're not good enough, or you're not smart enough, or you're not... You know, and before long, instead of believing the good things that Jesus is telling us, we're believing our enemy. Because we all have the same enemy, and it's Satan. And he starts, he starts messing with us by whispering these lies in our ears. And before long, we have it in our mind, and we start believing it. So what happens is our heart knows the truth. Our heart has Jesus. Our heart knows the truth. And so you have this little battle between your heart and your mind about things that aren't true. And it says, it says that thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So he anoints us. He anoints us. But we have to maintain this relationship, this close relationship with him to get these blessings, to have these blessings. If we're too busy to spend time with Jesus or God or the Holy Spirit or all three, then we're going to miss out on a lot of things that he has planned for us. So the end of this is, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love Psalm 23, and I know I have done lessons on it before, and I don't apologize because it's one of my favorites. And this is where I go for peace a lot of times, usually in death. When, when people die, I usually go and I want to read this. But I thought, I never really understood. I pretty much understood the rest. The analogy of a shepherd and sheep. But I never really understood that about the table. I go, why, why would he prepare us a table in front of our enemies? But now I understand. And I understand that we are not to invite our enemy to that table. That that table is set apart for us and the shepherd. A one-on-one -on -one relationship with the shepherd where we sit down and he tells us good things. He shares with us good things where the enemy comes in and he shares lies with us because that's who he is. He's the father of lies. That's why they call him the father of lies. He continually is in front of God accusing God's children of things. He is the accuser. So he is our enemy and we need to not invite him to our table that Jesus has prepared for us individually with him. Anyway, I thought that message was so good. But I'm going to move on to some more, some more scripture, too. I also like John 10, because it talks about the shepherd. And it talks about how the shepherd takes care of the sheep. And I know I've done this one before, too. But maybe somebody needed to hear it that didn't, didn't get to hear it before. Okay, so John 10, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, just like we were talking about a while ago. Um, he leads me in paths of righteousness. We have a leader we need to follow. We need to follow Jesus. And when he putteth forth Okay, and a stranger will they not follow. They won't follow a stranger. They're only going to follow Jesus. They're only going to follow that shepherd. Um, but will flee from him, for they knew not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh, cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling... The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. 
As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of his fold, of this fold, them also I must bring. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I have read that a million times. And last year, no, year before last, year before last, this really hit me because he's talking about other sheep. He's talking about other souls that he has to bring into the fold. He has other sheep outside of the fold, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Then there was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not, the works that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So Jesus is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He knows, we know his voice and he knows our voice. And if we follow him closely, then we won't stumble. We won't get pulled away by the wolf. If we stay close to Jesus, we will be okay. No man can pluck us out of the hand of Jesus. So let's read, um, I love, I love John 10. I didn't read all of it, but I read the part about the shepherd, which is my favorite part. I can't find Ephesians. Ephesians six twelve. I don't remember what it says. Okay, yes I do. So it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So we don't wrestle with we wrestle, we have massive spiritual warfare going on right now. I don't know if you can feel it, but I can feel it every day. It's kind of an oppression of people just not believing the truth and just falling into lies. Okay, so um, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. 
So we need to be watching out all the time because Satan is going to come up to our table and he's going to sit down. And this is this was how Louis Giglio did it last night. He said, how you doing? <laughs> because he's going to pretend that he really cares how we're doing. He really doesn't care how we're doing. And uh, yeah, okay. You still married that woman? Yeah. I don't know how you do it, man. I just, I don't know. I don't know how you do it every day. You know, day in, day out. I don't know. She was, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was so funny. <laughs> he was so funny. He loves his wife, though, so he was just pretending. But that's, that's what, that is what the enemy does. He sits down with us, pretends that he cares about us. He could care less about us. He can't have our soul if we're saved. But you know what he can do? He can steal our joy. He can take our blessings. He can do many things by leading us away into sin. He can't have our soul. But he sure does like to see God's children not being successful believing his lies that's what he likes because he likes to go and accuse us to God and then God goes they're my children they're bought by the blood of my son so just think about that just think about um, just think about are you giving the enemy a place at your table? Are you listening? Are you entertaining his words? Are you entertaining his lies? Or are you just like going, oh, yep, yep. speak to the hand, speak to the hand. You are not going to get a spot. You're not going to have a place at my table. My table that my shepherd has prepared for me with all the best things, all the best things that he has to offer, you are not going to get a spot. You're not going to interrupt my relationship with my shepherd. You're just not. You're not. And so sometimes we just have to make a stand for what's right. We just have to stand up to the enemy. And so, I forgot to read what I put, but I think, I think that I covered it, what I wrote this afternoon. But please, please, take time. Take time and go listen to that, because it's awesome. I did not share a song. I shared that, because it really impacted me. It really made me think. It made me think a lot about don't give the enemy a seat at your table. It's a special table that Jesus prepared for you. For you, according to what he thinks you need, what he wants for you, he prepared this table. And this table is for y'all to sit at. for him to share good things with you and not lies so don't do it don't do it just don't just don't okay I'm going to share what my quiet time was about and then I'm going to get off of here I'm going to start doing like 30 to 45 minutes I need to cut my time down because it's really hard for people to set aside time Okay, so this is what God shared with me. Child, what you watched last night, I drew you to. You drew me to this message. What you did yesterday, I took you to. He took me to that yesterday, that 
that I was planning on spending 12 hours at camp, but that it didn't work out like that. Things don't always work out the way that we have them planned in our head. I spared you yesterday as you saw what could have ended your life. I nearly had a, a horrible wreck as I was leaving the camp yesterday. Horrible. Just horrible. Like it was a motor home that had drifted off the road, was kind of in the gravel and the and the grass trying to get back on the road and I was meeting them and they were they were headed towards me when I realized what was going on and I started moving over to the right because I'm always going to give somebody my lane I am not going to argue with them and have a head on and somehow they just got straightened up but as I went past them they had a car behind them too I go man that was gonna be that could have been horrible that probably would have ended and, and I had I had someone's child in there with me too it probably could have ended our lives and life is fragile it's very fragile and I'm thankful because I pray every time I leave this house I pray for God's protection, and I need it. I nearly had a head-on coming back from Walnut Springs a while ago. Somebody was like at least a foot or two over the yellow line in my lane. I hug the white line, and Ricky gives me a hard time about it. That's exactly why, because people are coming over the yellow line. They're not paying attention. And he wasn't, I mean, he or she, I don't know whether it was a he or she, they weren't passing anybody. They were just not paying attention. So anyway, life is so fragile is what he says. And it is. It's very fragile. Child, so embrace every day. We need to embrace every day. Be aware of my protection and also be aware of the enemy. He is always before me accusing my children. He is relentless in his pursuit of souls that I created and belong to me. So he is relentless in those souls, those other sheep that Jesus must bring into his fold. They are, he is relentless after those souls. Relentless. He is sly and pretends to be a friend but is just looking for a crack to enter the heart and mind of my children. That is so true. He pretends to be our friend. He goes, hey, I got something better. Hey, look at this pasture over here. It is so awesome. You need to come over and frolic in this pasture. Pasture, <laughs> this pasture, it has green grass. And there is some water on the other side. Oh, so what if it's like moving 20 miles an hour, the water is, you know, it doesn't matter. And there's, and so what if there's uh, stickers over in this pasture that will get all in your fleece and be really hard to come out. And so what if there's some snakes over there? And so what if, you know, there's a wolf or two that lives there too? So what, so what, so what? He doesn't care, he doesn't care. He doesn't take care. The ones that are not ours, he has already entered. The ones that are not saved, he's already entered their heart. They can be won back with my truths and through the gospel of Jesus. Many are very far from my heart because of their choices that do not include me in my truths. The consequences are many for disobedience. Child, obedience is important to me. I call my children to be obedient to me, to walk in righteousness. But when they fail, I still love them the same. So when we fail, when we fail walking in righteousness, because we all do from time to time, um, he still loves us. He still loves us. They miss out on my blessings that come with obedience, though. 
You have been so blessed the past two years by being obedient to me, but you invite the enemy to your table at times too. I do. I do in my thoughts. My thought process is where I do it. Quit doing it and recognize when you do. I did it twice. I recognized twice today. I think this is a game changer in Christianity lives. If we can recognize when Satan is creeping in and whispering lies into our ears and we can go, stop, I'm not doing it. And that is a game changer. It definitely is. Watch my messenger again today. I never got a chance to watch him again today. I kind of wish I would have because I listened to a lot of stupid stuff about government and I could have been listening to that and taking notes. So forgive me God for doing that. The enemy does not reside in your heart so he starts whispering lies into your ears that reside in your mind. He starts a battle between your mind and your heart. And I said, wow, God, I never thought of it that way, but it makes so much sense. I asked you to order my steps yesterday, and you did. I was a little di disappointed how it turned out, but you needed to lead me to this message so I can share it with others, God. You are so awesome, God. I am thankful and grateful to serve you however you call what however you call me thank you for meeting me today God and for opening my eyes to more truth from your word I love you with my whole heart soul and mind soul mind and strength I didn't write it down right but I think it's both ways in the Bible give my mama and daddy a hug God I love you too my child Go be obedient to me in all I ask, child. Be ready when you're when you hear the trumpet sound, <clears throat> child. The reunion is soon, but many souls need to be bought, brought in quickly. So keep sharing, child. The beauty awaits you here, and the rewards also. I said, Maranatha, God. So I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Okay. All right. How can we do the salvation message? Steps to peace with God. I don't have any shepherd. I don't have any shepherd things. I have a new steps to peace with God though. Over here I found it in my car. I'll do it. Did you see my pile of junk over there? I don't know if it's the same. It might be a little shorter. I found it in my car. I have a whole pack of them. Steps to peace with God. So we'll do this one tonight. Let's see if it's the same. No, it's not. Steps to peace with God. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of exiting this life without being on good terms with Him? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you have made peace with God, but the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step 1. Understand God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal, fulfilling life. Well, it's different. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 I came that they may have life and have it 
abundantly. John 10.10 10. So why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling abundant life that God intended for us to have? Step 2. Admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey Him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey God and, and go their willful way. And we still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14.12 Your iniquities have, have made a separation between you and your God. Isaiah 59.2 No bridge reaches God except one. Step 3. Discover God's Bridge, the Cross Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though He was God's sinless Son, He became a human, took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin, bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5 Christ suffered once for, for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5.8 and 6.23 Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life, but each person must make a choice. So, step four embrace the truth, receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive Him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. Revelations 3.20 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Bible says, To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John 3.36 So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in Him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. So here's some steps. Admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness. Be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. Accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God.
Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So this is a good news track too. So if you said this prayer and accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life and the angels are rejoicing. So today is day one of your Christianity journey. If you would like to draw closer to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, then read God's Word every day and uh, start in Matthew so you can learn about Jesus. Pray and praise also. I think that I have done everything I came to do. I'm a little bit sleepy all of a sudden. I think allergy medicine just really kind of zonks me out lately. I took the kind yesterday that really makes me sleepy. So let's go to Numbers uh, 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his... Oh, excuse me. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Excuse me again. Hmm. The big ups. Huh. The Lord make his face shine upon thee. Oh, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Oh, I'm going to have to get off of here. So I'm going to be hiccuping. Let me get a drink of coffee and see if that helps. Oh, that coffee is so good. And it's not too hot. It has sugar and hazelnut cream in it, and it's awesome. All right, let me pray. God, we're just so thankful that we are your children. We, we are thankful that you gave us Jesus to be our shepherd. That he does prepare a table before our enemies, God, just to show our enemies how good he is to his children. To, to his sheep. God, we just pray. We pray for the lost, God. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to your truths, God. And we pray, God, that the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We just pray that you would give us the boldness to share with more and more people and that you would help us to be more in your presence, that you would help us to testify of the good things that you've done in our lives, and that you would help us to encourage others. God, we're thankful. I'm thankful for this tool. I'm thankful for what the message that you gave, Louis Giglio, that you led me to. Thank you, God. He is such an awesome servant of yours. I love to listen to him speak. Thank you, God, for all the many blessings, for the blessings of the rain today. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I need to say amen. I had my unspoken request from last week got answered, so... Thank you, God, for that, too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, pray and cheer, warriors. I'm going to get off of here. I've been off of here longer than I thought I would be on here. Ugh. Sorry. My, my posture is bad and my back hurts. Okay. So have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome Tuesday. Much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.